about. It's like an Old West postcard. There you go. It's very picturesque, yeah. you know. <laughs> there is a reason why when you think of the desert, you're probably thinking of this particular kind of cactus. This is the saguaro cactus. <laughs> That's the emoji. Right? There's an emoji for us. <laughs> right? I mean, if you want a cactus emoji, you got to go with the saguaro. <laughs> but now, the symbol of desert southwest survival... It's not uncommon to see him get to 150 or older. ...is in danger. I think it's drought stress. This one's dead. Oop, careful. <laughs> All that's left is the skeleton. I love saguaro ribs. Did you know they have a skeleton? They all have these wooden structures. So we're here doing an autopsy on this cactus right. that didn't make it. That passed away 10 years ago. Meet the cactus doctor, Peter Breslin from the University of Arizona's Desert Laboratory. Why are there so many big cactuses on this hill? That's a great question. We're still kind of trying to figure that out. <laughs> and Andy Fisher. I had to wear my Miss Frizzle earrings today. From Saguaro National Park in Tucson. The park was set aside in 1933 specifically for science and specifically to look at this cactus. For 60 years now, the park and the school have been counting. Last count was about 1.6 million individual cactus. And measuring these 26 feet tall armed and dangerous plants every 10 years. And this is what we're doing for about 4,000 individuals. <laughs> the last time they counted the cacti, there were 1,300 new babies on this hill. The problem is we're not finding any new ones right now. We don't see as many young ones uh, as we would like to see. This time around, they found less than 200. How old is this one? It's really hard to say. I would say this one's probably about 15 years old. In Saguaro world, 15 years is a baby. They don't even sprout their first arms until they're at least 80. The problem could be an invasive plant called buffel grass. So there's new competition now. A lot of, it seems like a lot of competition on the ground. But it also burns. And the saguaros are not adapted to those hot fires. There's another problem. Despite their prickly demeanor, this cactus is quite sensitive to a desert climate that's been changing. It seems like cacti, right? Boom, they would love climate change, you know, they'd, they'd be like, yes, you know, it's, it's warmer, whatever. But actually, saguaros are very narrowly adapted to a particular set of conditions. And as those conditions change, the keystone species that has been quietly keeping this ecosystem in check for centuries is not reproducing like it should. When you remove the keystone, the whole arch falls. And that's the real concern. As the old ones age out, there may not be enough new ones to provide shade, shelter, food, and water to animals, not humans. So there's water inside here, but yes. water that I cannot drink. So most folks would get sick. This mystery is in no way solved. But a drought that's bad enough to stress out a giant cactus is a thorn in the side of these scientists they can no longer ignore. Uh, okay, they're, they're not thorns, they're modified leaves, but you get it. So this provides some shade on that flesh, especially in the summertime? In the Sonoran Desert, Dave Malkoff, The Weather Channel.